Hey, welcome back. My name is Liz if you are new and in today's video I'm going to be doing my mid-month wrap-up for the month of September. Let's go ahead and get right on into it. The first book that I read was Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth. This is a sapphic horror comedy steeped in a whole lot of mystery. We start off learning about Flo and Clara, two students at a school called Brocants, as they get their hands on a scandalizing book. Mind you, it's the turn of the century and these girls are impressionable as all girls are. Mary McLean's memoir inspires them to establish a club called the Plain Bad Heroine Society. They fall in this thing called love and get stung by a bunch of yellow jackets. Their bodies are found with the book next to them. In another storyline, we are a hundred years into the future where Flo and Clara's demise turns into a book and that book turns into a horror film starring celebrity actor Harper Harper as Flo and former child star Audrey Wells as Clara. Not only do we get to follow these two actresses, but we also get to see the writer of the book that inspired the horror film and her name is Merritt. I thought her character was really great paired with that of Harper's bubbling personality because Merritt is just so prickly. I really liked these three characters especially when they are together. There's also another storyline set in the 1900s that follows the headmistress of Burkhans named Libby and her lover named Alex. This is where we get all our eerie and gothic feels. There are so many creepy scenes. I just loved it. I can never look at wasps the same ever again though. Overall, I really love the parallels between the two main storylines. I'm actually a fan of the way the story was told. I thought the narration was really unique and I just wanted more. I liked how every single character in here is queer except for a few minor characters. The illustrations were a nice bonus. They added to the story nicely. This is a 600 page book and I do feel like it could have been shaved down quite a bit and it still would have the same impact but I did fly through this so maybe it's just the right amount. I gave this book 4 stars out of 5 stars. Then I read Goddess of the Hunt by Tessa Dare. This is the first book in the Wonton Dairy Maid trilogy. We follow our main character Lucy Waltham as she is trying to lure a new husband. But before she can do this, she feels like she needs to practice. So she turns to her brother's best friend, Jeremy Trescott. Things happen between them that jeopardizes her plans in fighting a husband. I really like the beginning half of this book but once you make your way to the second half mm, it just has very different vibes than the first half and it sort of takes you out of the story i felt like the character i felt like the character development for one of the characters was done in a way to show the layers of who he is and i'm like no put those layers back that is to say, I just didn't like how he acts like a completely different person and also the lack of communication between our two main characters results in a lot of page time where we are reading things that are pretty much meaningless to the overall plot. But despite this, I still really like this book. It has all the elements I look for in romance. It's fun, it's steamy, it's just really lovely. I give this book four stars out of five stars. Then I read Shogun by James Clavell. This is the first book in Clavell's Asian saga. This was such a fascinating book based on a true story. Now, while this is not 100% accurate in its depictions of Japanese culture, it comes pretty darn close. Not that I would really know though. I was really impressed with the scope of this epic and all the concepts that were smoothly interwoven throughout the story. We follow our main character John Blackthorne as he becomes stranded in feudal Japan during the 17th century. As Blackthorne along with his crew 
fall into the hands of a group of samurais. He must figure out how to stay alive and strategize ways to return to the sea. This is really like a survival story as he's trying his best to assimilate into the Japanese culture. He's over there learning the language like it's nobody's business. He quickly gets sucked into the middle of really delicate Japanese politics and he becomes a valuable asset because he has all this knowledge of ships and other tactics useful if you want to have an upper hand out at sea. And everybody either wants him dead or they want to use him for their own personal schemes so they could gain power. It's not too long after that he is known as the Anjin san. I thought it was really interesting that the Japanese were already accustomed to Westerners with all the Jesuit priests, because they're Westerners. I enjoyed reading how the Japanese only tolerate the priests and their teachings because of the economical aspects of it, and that they supply the silk the Japanese so cherish. So when Blackthorn lands on their doorstep, they're like, oh, it's just another barbarian. I love how this book portrays the dichotomy between the two cultures where one is seen as civilized, Japan, and the other is not. When I recommended this to my roommate to read because he was playing a video game with like a bunch of samurais in it, I was like, well, this is a book you might like. And he was like, oh, it must be heavy with romance. And I was like, no, but that was before I got to the romance part. so. I guess he was right on that front. I really like this book and I gave this four stars out of five stars. After this I read The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. This is a paranormal horror debut with many elements of feminism interwined within the story. We follow our main character Emmanuel more as she tries to find her place in a society where all women are essentially forced into submission and are treated horribly. Females are viewed as inherently wicked and must always be obedient. She really tries to do what is expected of her, but she is drawn to but she is really drawn to the forbidden darkwood, which is a forest inhabited by four dead witches. The settlement is called Bethal and it's surrounded by this wall that keeps light skins in and dark skins out on the outskirts. The villagers treat Emmanuel with contempt because of the supposed sins of her parents and also because of her skin tone. The village is run by a man obsessed with power known as the Prophet. He does a bunch of questionable things to keep his title and position. Since this is a polygamous society, he has multiple wives, but he physically abuses them. Not only does he have all his wives under his thumb, but he also has every female within the settlement subservient to him meaning that their choices and things are extremely limited to basically do what I say or be cast aside or worse, be burned at the stake for witchery. The book really dives deep into this exploitation of both girls and women and runs with it to the extent of examining things that render females as the ones to be punished, almost like a scapegoat. No, exactly like a scapegoat. The Prophet really does serve as an excellent example of a misogynistic predator. There's quite a few scenes in here that made my skin crawl. I could definitely do without the onslaught of animals. There's plenty of gory aspects and retro mutilation. I kept thinking like, man, these girls be brainwashed. In the beginning of the book, it mentions how some of the villagers possess a type of magic, but it never really explains it at all. I thought that was like a real disservice to the story. It's like, why even mention it at all if you're not going to do anything with it in terms of the other characters, you know? Also, isn't it kind of hypocritical of the prophets to be persecuting a bunch of girls for supposed witchcraft when they're over here having visions, looking into the future? They call it the gift of sight, but it's like, okay, dude, well, witches have gifts too. I ended up giving this book 3.5 stars out of 5 stars. These are the books that I've read so far this month. Consider subscribing for you won't miss any of my upcoming videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.
Bye.